In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty Father, since the dawn of creation, you have shown your love for humanity, and in the fullness of time, you sent your Son to redeem us. As we meditate on his suffering, death, and resurrection, help us to realize that mere sentiment is not enough. We must convert our passive love into active loyalty. <clears throat> Every work we do must be a sign of appreciation for your love. May we learn from these stations of the cross that the reason why our Redeemer died for us was that we might live for him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Jesus, Lord, condemned, defiled, may we too be meek and mild. May we feel no bitter hatred when we too are persecuted, left alone to walk your way. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. In the greatest mock trial of all time, Jesus is declared a criminal only because he claimed to be who he really is, the Son of God. Pilate, afraid of what will happen to him if he does what is right, gives in to the mob and condemns Jesus to death. We fill the shoes of Pilate so often, fearful of what people will say if we do not go along with the crowd. And so because we are too cowardly to stand up for what is right, we turn away from you, Jesus, the best friend we have. Give us the strength to do what is right, no matter the cost, no matter what anyone thinks or says. Lord, so too throughout history, the innocent have always been maltreated, condemned, and killed. How many times have we ourselves preferred complacency to the truth, our reputation to justice, Strengthen the quiet voice of our conscience, your own voice in our lives. Lord Jesus crucified. Now the cross as Jesus bore it has become for us who share it. The jeweled cross of victory. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. And now an amazing thing happens. The soldiers tell Jesus to carry the cross to his own execution. Not only does Jesus accept the cross, he reaches out to embrace it with the supreme gesture of love. O oh Lord, when things don't go the way we want them to, we complain and try everything we can to get rid of the little crosses we are carrying. Sometimes we even try to take revenge on anyone who is the cause of our little trouble. And yet, you not only accepted the cross, you also embraced us, though we hardly deserved it, and saved us. Lord, you willingly carried your cross for the sake of all poor sinners. 
Help us to see our daily suffering as a share in your cross. Give us the courage to offer up our trials in union with your redemptive work. Lord Jesus crucified, weak and prodded, cursed and fallen, his whole body bruised and swollen. Jesus tripped and lay in pain. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Jesus has already lost so much blood because of the scourging by the soldiers and the crown of thorns knifing into his head, that the weight of the cross drives him to the ground. But his love for us is too great to quit now, so he struggles to his feet to continue his march towards our salvation. O oh Lord, we are weak, and without your help, we would fall a hundred times a day and never get up again. But with your life within us, with your spirit leading us, we can win the victory over sin and our own selfishness. We are no longer alone in our struggle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. We are with you and you with us, and together we can rise and continue to follow you. Lord Jesus, the weight of the cross made you fall to the ground. The weight of our sin, the weight of our pride brought you down. When our weaknesses cause us to lose hope, help us to remember that your grace is there to lift us up. As you rose after each fall, May we rise from sin to follow you more faithfully. Lord Jesus crucified. Jesus met his grieving mother, she who made the Lord our brother. Now a sword her heart had pierced. The fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Mary was told years ago that a, so a sword of sorrow would pierce her heart. And now, when she sees her own son carrying that heavy cross, she feels the sword twist in her heart. Jesus also feels the pain. He knows that his mother is sharing in his passion. As if all he was going through wasn't enough, there is this extra agony of knowing that his mother is not spared from his tremendous suffering. O oh Mary, mother of Jesus, and our mother too. How natural it would have been for you to run out through the mob in an attempt to stop it all, to lift the cross from the shoulders of your son. But no, you knew that Jesus had to suffer in order to save us. And so you held back and accepted what was killing your son and breaking your own heart. Holy Mary, Mother of the Lord, you remain faithful when the disciples fled. In this way, at the hour of the cross, at the hour of the world's darkest night, you became the mother of all believers, the mother of the church. We beg you, help us to remain faithful to your Son and grant that our faith may bear fruit in courageous service. May we imitate your example 
of a love ever ready to share in the sufferings of the members of Christ's body. Lord Jesus crucified. Simon stopped in hesitation, not foreseeing his proud station, called to bear the cross of Christ. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene, helps Jesus to carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Jesus had suffered so much by this time that it becomes apparent he might not make it to Calvary. And so the soldier sees a stranger along the road and force him to help Jesus with the cross. O Lord, how great was your plan of rescuing and freeing us. You knew that you were going to become weak and that you would need help. And so you knew someone would have to carry your cross for you. When this stranger was first chosen for the job, he probably resented it and even tried to get out of it. But what a privilege it was, how lucky he was. And the same is true for us. You permit us to help you with your work of saving the world by giving us the opportunity to work at your side, by helping others, by showing others, by our good life, what it means to be a friend of yours. Lord, you opened the eyes and heart of Simon of Cyrene, and you gave him, by his share in your cross, the grace of faith. Help us to come to the aid of our neighbors in need, even when this interferes with our own plans and desires. Help us to realize that it is a grace to be able to share the cross of others. And in this way, know that we are walking with you. Lord Jesus crucified, <clears throat> brave but trembling came the woman, none but she would flaunt the Roman. Moved by love beyond her fear. <laughs> the sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The face of Jesus is now showing the full fury of what he is going through. The blood from the crown of thorns on his head is streaming down. His hair gets in his eyes. There is the sweat, the dirt, the spittle. And then all of a sudden, a woman breaks through the crowd. She takes off her veil and uses it to wipe your face. She is rewarded for her heroic act. For when she takes her veil away, she sees an imprint of his face on it. Lord Jesus, why do we hold back when there is some good we could do? When we should help a friend, when we should break through the opinion of the crowd and do what is right. Help us to have the courage of Veronica. Help us to see the terrific truth that whenever we do something to help someone else, we are doing it for you. Help us recognize the amazing chance we have dozens of times every day to do as much as Veronica did for you by doing good to all those we encounter. Lord, <clears throat> grant us hearts that seek your face. Keep us from the blindness of heart 
that sees only the surface of things. Give us the simplicity and purity which allow us to recognize your presence in the world. Impress your face on our hearts as we encounter you along the way in our suffering brothers and sisters, may we show your image to the world. Lord Jesus crucified, prostrate on the dust he crumbled, flogged in body he resembled. All our brothers poor and scorn. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. <clears throat> the sad journey continues, and now the cross feels like a weight of a thousand pounds. This plus the tremendous loss of blood, caused Jesus to grow so weak and unsteady that he falls again. This time he has trouble cushioning the fall, and he lands hard, crushed in the dust of the Golgotha Road. Our Lord and our God, what an amazing thing it is that you would permit men to put you in a position where you were truly helpless. Even then, because you are God, you could have stopped the whole thing, called upon thousands of angels to come and rescue you, driving off the cruel people who were doing this to you. But no, for our salvation, you wanted to feel the full force of the suffering. Lord Jesus Christ, you have borne all our burdens and you continue to carry us. Our weight has made you fall. Lift us up, for by ourselves we cannot rise from the dust. Free us from the bonds of sin. In place of a heart of stone, Give us a heart of flesh, a heart capable of seeing. Lift us up so that we may lift up others in your name. Lord Jesus crucified. <laughs> may our sympathy for Jesus Turn to those who here now need us. May we see Christ bruised in them. The Eighth Station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. We see a group of women standing along the road, watching Jesus approach. Many of these women had hoped that Jesus was the one they had waited for, the Messiah who would establish a great kingdom here on earth. Now they see Jesus broken and humble, making his way to his execution, and so they wept tears of pity for him. Dear Jesus, you told these women, weep not for me, but for yourselves. In the midst of all your suffering, you took the time to show concern for the suffering of others. And you told them, as you tell us, to be prepared for the time when we would have to carry the cross in our own lives. Lord, to the weeping women, you spoke words of comfort. So often, in the midst of our own small trials, we ignore the pain of others and sometimes even lash out 
because we feel that our situation is unfair. Help us to imitate you in your love for others, even as you carried your cross. May our sufferings make us more compassionate towards the brothers and sisters whom we encounter on the way. Lord Jesus crucified, Jesus fell again in weakness, stumbling as we do to lead us. Through our sorrow and our pain. The ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. <laughs> and now he goes down again for the third time. And this time it is a complete collapse a torturing fall under the weight of the heavy cross. There is no softening the blow at all. He hits the rocky road with full force. And while the blood streams from his body, the body of the Son of God lays in the dust from which he created us. O oh, Jesus, we think that if we had been there, we would have rushed forward to help you on your feet. But if we had, we know you would have preferred that we share with you the pain and the suffering, not that we try to eliminate it. Help us to see the need for suffering in our own lives. Give us the courage to accept the cross when we encounter it realizing that this is the only way we can turn away from our own self-centeredness and follow you. Lord, your church often seems like a boat about to sink, a boat taking in water on all every side. In your field we see more weeds than wheat, the soiled garments and face of your church throw us into confusion. Have mercy on your church. Within her, Adam continues to fall. Remind us always that you stood up, you arose, and you can also raise us up. Save and sanctify your church. Lord Jesus crucified, <laughs> Stripped and jeered by his own nation, Jesus stood in desolation, giving all he had to give. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Finally, Jesus reaches the top of the hill of Calvary. Like an ordinary criminal, he now has his garments torn from him. All those places where his clothes had stuck to the bloody wounds are ripped open, and the blood pours out, just as if all those blows had been given to him all over again. O oh Lord, how amazing was your submission to all that cruelty, that you would allow this torture without a word or complaint. Now it's time for us to speak. Now it's time for us to have the nerve to stand facing you, facing what we have done to you by our sins. You stood in the position of a criminal but we are the ones guilty of the crime, the crime of deserting you, our friend, turning to our own selfish wants and desires. We admit it all now. We stand naked before you. Help us never to turn away from you again. Lord Jesus, you were stripped of your garments 
exposed to shame, and cast out of society. You took upon yourself the shame of Adam, and you healed it. You also take upon yourself the sufferings and needs of the poor, the abused and neglected, the outcasts of the world. Give us a profound respect for each human person at every stage of their existence and in all situations in which we encounter them. Clothe us in the light of your grace. Lord Jesus crucified, <clears throat> pierced the hands that blessed and cured us, pierced the feet that walked to free us, walked the hill of Calvary. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Jesus is told to lie down on the cross, and he obeys without a murmur. They don't have to force his arms out on the beams. He throws them out in an expression of complete surrender, a gesture of a total self-giving of himself. Then the clamor of iron fills the air as the soldiers nail his hands and feet to the wood. O oh, Jesus, it is hard to believe that love could be as great as yours. Here you are, the Son of God, and yet you became a man and went through all of this for us. You completely turned away from what your human body wanted and submitted to the will of your Father. Your Father permitted all of this as part of his plan for rescuing us. He knew that if we saw how far you would go to prove your love for us, we would be so moved and touched that we would be yours, eager to give you all our love in response. Lord Jesus Christ, you let yourself be nailed to the cross, accepting terrible cruelty of this suffering, the destruction of your body and your dignity. May we never flee from what you call us to do. Help us to remain faithful to your example of self-giving. Unmask the false freedom that would distance us from you. Show us that to accept your binding freedom and being bound fast to you, we will truly be free. Lord Jesus crucified, <laughs> life eternal, death defiant, bowed his head, the world was silent. Through his death came life anew. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The cross is now lifted into the air and placed firmly in the ground. Jesus hangs suspended between heaven and earth, demonstrating to all the people who will ever live that there is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for a friend. And finally, it is finished. Your work of love is accomplished. Loving Savior, as you hung upon the cross, the sky was darkened and the earth trembled. In your agony, you cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But that was not the last word. 
with complete confidence, you gave to us the remedy for all our doubt and pain. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, if only every person could stand at the foot of the cross and witness the power of your love, then no one would choose to sin and turn away from you. And yet we can. The mystery of your death is made present to us every time the holy sacrifice of the Mass is offered. Through the Eucharist, your great work of redemption is renewed. Give us the grace, we pray, to prefer nothing to participating fully in the Holy Mass and worthily receiving you in Holy Communion. Lord Jesus crucified, stunned and stricken Mary Mother, in your arms was placed our brother. Full of grace, now filled with grief. The thirteenth station. The body of Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Mary, the mother of God, watched her son go by on the way to Calvary. Then for three hours, she stood and watched his blood run down from the cross as he gave his life for us. Now, at long last, he is taken down and given back to her. It has been a long time since she first held him on Christmas morning. Then she placed him in the wood of the manger. Now she takes him from the wood of the cross. Dearest Mary, before he died, your son Jesus gave you to us to be our mother. How could we ever deserve such a grace? Through baptism, we become members of Christ's body, and he accepts us as his brothers and sisters. Mary, help us to live up to this great privilege. Help us to live as your sons and daughters, always united to Jesus, our brother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord Jesus crucified, Jesus, Lord, your gift accepted. In three days you resurrected. You did first what we shall do. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The Savior of the world, the Son of God, doesn't even have his own grave when he dies. And so he is placed in the borrowed tomb of a good man named Joseph, who is helped by Nicodemus and John, your beloved disciple. Mary Magdalene and the other women accompany you to your resting place. Their hearts were heavy with grief, even though you had told them that you would rise from the dead. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we believe that by your death, you completely destroyed the power of death. As your earthly body rested in the tomb, your divine soul visited our ancient parents 
who had awaited your victory since their fall from grace. Breaking down the doors of Sheol, you announced to them the good news of redemption. You said to them, as you promised the good thief, this day you will be with me in paradise. Lord Jesus Christ, you told the disciples that the grain of wheat must die in order to produce abundant life. By your burial, you have transformed the grave into a sign of hope that promises eternal life. Grant that we may always be witnesses to this hope which casts out fear and makes it possible to love without limit, even as you have loved us. Lord Jesus crucified. Jesus risen, be our lover in your food and in our brother. Lead us home to heaven with you. We stand before the altar where Christ's sacrifice is remembered and renewed. Through the Holy Eucharist, we are privileged to become present to and participate in the self-offering of Jesus to his Father. Here with the whole church, we proclaim his death and profess his resurrection. By our worthy reception of his body and blood, we are transformed so that, becoming more like Jesus, we too can give ourselves for the life of the world. Jesus, risen Savior, help us to find grace through your great redemptive act, your Passover. Help us to turn away from sin and selfishness and to give ourselves wholeheartedly to you. As we have followed you on your way of the cross, lead us to the fullness of life you have promised. As you have taught us in your life, death, and resurrection, help us to trust in the ever-present love of God as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.